Hey, I'm Jake, and today I'm drawing this mech whale, and I'm talking all about talent. All right, before we get into the drawing and talking about talent, I want to first show you this. The Drawings 3 books came in yesterday and they look amazing. I am super proud of this collection. Um, it's thick too. I mean, it's 140 pages, 44 pages, 144 pages. It's the biggest collection of drawings I've ever done. And I feel like this last year of my work was um, a little bit of a leveling up compared to previous, uh, previous years. So I'm really glad to have them all collected um, in this book. Those of you that bought copies last week, I really appreciate it. Your books are going to get signed this week and then I'll start shipping them out, packing them up and shipping them out next week. Uh, if you hadn't ordered a copy yet, now's your chance if you want to get it, if you want it to be shipped out with, uh, with the rest of the books. So order a copy, the link is below. Uh, but this book, really awesome, I'm really happy and proud of it. Number two, are you following me on Snapchat? Some of you are, a bunch of you aren't. Um, I'm posting stuff pretty much every day on Snapchat, whether it's just what I uh, worked on that day, uh, sketches and stuff leading up to my drawings. Um, yesterday I posted, you can see right here. My car because a big truck is here, dropping off the Drawings 3 books. So I'm snapping about the Drawings 3 books actually getting dropped off at my house. So if you want, to see stuff as it happens, follow me on Snapchat because I'm posting that stuff. Um, the handle is Mr. Jake Parker, so check it out. And um, I think that's it. Let's move into the, the drawing. Okay, so, so what I have here are my initial sketches for this idea of combining armor or, or, or you know, mech battle armor to, uh, to a whale and bringing them on land and, and using them for you know, weaponizing them and using them for battle. It's super ridiculous idea, but whatever. Uh, uh, so here we go. I'm, I'm just going to sketch it. I had an initial sketch there you kind of saw, um, which I don't think was, was successful. So I'm starting again. Uh, and this time I think, the, you know, I want to try to get a better pose and, and just get a better shape language going on with it. But um, while I do that, I want to talk about talent and, and answering that question of, am I talented enough? Uh, and I think it's a question that it's not just... A question asked by creatives it's, it's a question asked by anybody anybody who wants to you know has goals and wants to achieve things but before we get into answering that question I want to define talent I looked it up in the dictionary and it it defines it as an innate ability an uh, aptitude or faculty uh, also above average ability okay that's how the dictionary defines it and I would say a uh, you know a an easier way to, to put that down is what comes easy. Talent is what comes easy. When I mean, you look at someone and say, oh, that person's so talented. Well, what comes easy to them? That's, that's what, I think that's what talent is. But that's really narrow. I think there's more to talent than that. I, 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 as I you know, was thinking about this and, and writing notes on this, I, was, I realized there's really, there's two kinds of talent. And I think all of us, all of us with the talent that we have, it's made up of parts of these two kinds of talent. And what they are is one, fluid talent, and two, channeled talent, okay? Fluid talent is what you're born with, all right? Channeled talent is what you've learned, what you've come to, uh, to understand and gain, all right? So for, for example, fluid talent is, let's say um, we've, we've got a kid who picks up piano early, and by the age of five or six, um, he's been able to sound out and can play Chopin's Nocturne Opus 9, number two, right? It's a beautiful piece of music, one of my favorite pieces. It's really hard, it's, it's, it's advanced, it's complicated, but you have this kid who, uh, he can sound it out, he hears it, plucks it out on the piano, and boom, he can play it. That right there is fluid talent, all right? It flows through you naturally. It's, it's, it's when things just click really easy, all right? Channel talent. An example would be we have Sarah. She practiced two, practices two hours a day, uh, and for 10 years she does that and just puts in all this time and effort. And at the age of 20, 
she can now play Chopin, and she does it beautifully, and she does it really well. But it's because of these, this 10 years of hard work and effort. And, and channeled talent is what you build piece by piece, brick by brick, uh, you know, pipeline by pipeline. It's, it's what you've learned over time, and it's based on all of your successes and your failures combined and, and how they all add up. Okay, so one is fluid, which just flows through you naturally. It's it's when things just click really easy, and channeled talent is is what you build on top of that, or what you build through your experiences and through your practice. All right. So now that we have this working definition, this, this I think more encompassing definition of talent, let's try and answer that question: Am I talented enough? And really, it's a flawed question. It's faulty. It, it if not faulty, it's It's at least an unfinished question. My question to that question is, for what? Am I talented for what? All right, so that's what you need to ask yourself. And and it has to be, I think, somewhat specific. Um, In times past, I've asked myself, am I talented enough to to draw comics for Marvel? Or am I talented enough to... um, uh, to get a, a book on the New York Times bestseller list, all right? Those are questions I've asked myself. The, you know, for you, it might be, uh, if, you're, if you're an artist, it could be the same thing, but if, if it's other areas of life, am I talented enough to someday be in the NBA? I don't know, that's, you know, that's really big thinking. Uh, uh, am I talented enough to do a four-minute mile, right? Uh, so these, these are the specific end of that question, am I talented enough? for what and and in order to answer that it takes some serious uh self-evaluation and i think some really serious self-awareness of knowing who you are and what your capabilities are and how to figure out that that self-awareness how to figure out what those capabilities are you have to dig deep and you have to answer some hard questions and that is first off how naturally gifted are you all right uh, when I think about drawing, all drawing is is putting down on paper what you see in your in your head. And for some people, that's really hard. They can't, they, you know, they see something in their head, but but putting it on paper is different. Or, the, or the, the image in their head isn't very clear, but putting it on on paper, you know, they it it just there's there's not that clicking. There's not that that connection there. And I think on on the music side of things, people can hear something and pluck it on the piano really easy Uh, some people can um, you know on the sports side of things some people can just imagine their body doing something and then boom they're doing it they're flipping they're back flipping and twisting or whatever all right Um, how naturally gifted are you in in this particular realm where you're wanting to um, achieve right and where you're wanting to um, to progress that's what you gotta ask yourself and and if you if you realize that Okay, things don't click very easy. Easy. Um, you just need to know that and and work with that. So that's your that's dealing with the the fluid talent side of things. Okay, the channel talent side of things. You need to ask yourself how much knowledge have I already gained? How much craft or how much experience have I already put into this? Um, uh, you know, if it if it's a sports thing, how much have you practiced? If it's a drawing thing, how much have you actually drawn? Uh, uh, and, and I think to go along with that is that's looking at, at you up to this point, but moving forward, how much knowledge and training do you actually have access to? Okay. Do you have access to, um, uh, people who can teach you, you know, good teachers or, or schools, right. Or online classes, how much do you have access to? Um, and, and the broader, the bigger part of that is how much time can you give it because that's really that's really what it is 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 we all are given a certain amount of days in the week a certain amount of hours in the day and how much time can you put into practicing and learning and training yourself all right another part of that isn't just time it's other resources Um, what resources are at your disposal to uh, to put into this you know how much money can you throw at education how much money can you throw at tools oftentimes the right tools 
can improve your abilities. Uh, if you think about it on the music side of things, it's very hard to learn how to play piano if you don't have access to a piano. And I think the same with art. It's hard to learn your craft if you don't have access to uh, good art supplies and good, you know, good tools, whether it's, it's uh, digital tools or, or the right paint or the right brushes. Um, and, and I think another extension of this as far as resources is who are you surrounded by? Okay. Are you surrounded by people who are more talent, talented than you? What's their level of talent? I think oftentimes when you, when you put yourself around, or surround yourself with people who are way more talented than you, you're going to strive to, to, to try and reach their level uh, and, and try to gain that. Okay, so these are the factors that, that play into your level of talent. And these are the, the, the really big questions you have to ask yourself before you can answer if you're talented enough to do the thing that you want to do. All right. The good news is, you know, okay, there's bad news and good news. Bad news is, is there's nothing you can do about fluid talent. That's just what you're born with. But the good news is channeled talent is completely up to you. You have total control over that. All right. If you don't have access to these resources, you can get yourself in a position where you do have access to those resources. Uh, channel talent is all about how much work, how much hustle, how much effort you could put into it. All right. And I think um, I think we see many people who are really talented, who might be low on fluid talent and really high on channel talent. And we think, oh, they're so, you know, they're so good at that. I'll never be as good at that. And what we don't know is what are these levels of fluid and channel ta talent that's that's operating, you know, in their lives. I want to look at some specific scenarios here. Okay, so let's look at low fluid, low channel talent, and and what that gives us. If if a person has low fluid talent and low channeled talent, they're just bad at it, and there's really no progress. And if a person just realizes, okay, I don't, I wasn't born with any gifts in this, you know, in this realm that I'm that I'm pursuing, and I don't have the, um, uh, you know, I don't have the hustle or I don't have the, the personality to put all this time and effort into it, I think that person just needs to realize they're not going to progress above a certain level, uh, or they're not going to progress at all. Okay, so let's look at the flip side of that high fluid high channeled talent all right these kinds of people are your mozarts your uh, michelangelos okay um, these are your on the sports side these are your michael phelps these are people who are endowed with amazing abilities you, you hear about mozart and as a child he's he's just astonishingly good at piano and 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 impressing people with with his musical abilities, and then he goes on to having this amazing career where he writes, uh, composes all of these these beautiful pieces of music that basically alters the course of, of music. Right? Um, you look at Michael Phelps; he's born with this body that is designed for swimming. His arms and upper body are proportionately bigger than his lower body. He can just move through the water. And then he puts in hours upon hours, days and years of work on honing that body and and getting the muscle and every coordination and everything to do it. High fluid, high channeled. Uh, and, and these sorts of people are, are you know, I'd say a low percentage of the population, and and uh, I'm definitely not one of them. But they're out there, and and I think there's someone you can look to for inspiration. But but I don't know if you can ever aspire to that to that level. All right, now let's get into more realistic um, things. And I think what you see a lot sometimes is high fluid, low channeled people, and these are the people that peak early. This is the kid who, yeah, maybe picks up piano and five or ten is like really good at it, but lose interest, loses interest and never practices. And, you know, later on, they're like, oh, yeah, I used to play piano and, and they're kind of there, but but they're definitely not at a level where they can perform and and, you know, operate uh, uh, in a professional uh, scenario. Right. Um uh, you may have known a kid in school who who really drew well. I, I know I did. I knew lots of kids in school where I was just like, oh man, I'll never be as good as them. They draw so awesome, but they didn't put in the practice and the and the and the and the hard work, 
and eventually I passed them up and I was drawing better than them okay so high fluid low channel those are people that peak early flip that low fluid high channel I think this is um, or average fluid right I think this is this is uh, this is the majority of us we're all given some gifts some talents but um, I know so many people who just put work into it because they love it they want to do it and they want to get better and I think with uh, a person with average to low fluid but high to above average above average to high channel talent this is a person who's going to progress and who's going to have um, uh, possibilities open up to them. They're going to have ways to to improve and to and to have su find success and, and to reach these their, you know their goals. All right, I want to break here for just a second and, and share an analogy. All right, and hopefully this makes sense. Just bear with me, but I think it does. I've been thinking about this. I think it applies to um, to talent and and the way that we're looking at it here. Okay, so so I grew up in Arizona. Uh, I grew up in Mesa, Arizona, where the annual average rainfall is nine inches. All right. So most states in the USA, rainfall averages between 30 and, and 40 inches a year. And here in Arizona, or where I grew up in Arizona, it's nine inches, and yet millions of people live, survive, thrive in the middle of the desert with such little water. And the reason for that is, and, and we learned a lot about these guys uh, in school growing up, is the Hohokam. Um, about 600 years, about the year 600, the Hohokam began constructing um, irrigation canals. Uh, these trenches were 12 feet deep. They were using, they were digging them out. You know, some of them were 12 feet deep. They were using uh, digging sticks to dig them out. And by 1450, they had constructed 500 miles of canals which uh, irrigated 110,000 acres of land and it supported the largest um, society in the southwest and that was they said it was about 80,000 people okay so with just meager rainfall they were able to support this large agricultural society um, and I think that applies directly to what I'm talking about here with talent it's it's that sometimes with meager fluid talent with meager fluid talent a person with exceptional channeled talent can still build a, a successful career uh, whether it's as an artist or a musician or something just as long as they channel every drop of their fluid talent into this area of working and growing and practicing and getting better and building off of successes and building off of failures. Um, you've, you've often heard and it's often said that it takes 10,000 hours to, uh, to become an expert. And those 10,000 hours right there, that's building these canals. That's you building these canals and getting every drop of this nine inches a year through those canals and getting them to where they need to go. It's tough. It's hard building that canal system. You know, it's not easy, but it can be done. And I've I've known people and I've seen people who who I look at as talented. And you look at some of their early work and you think, oh my gosh, um, uh, you've really come a long way. It's because of that massive those massive amounts of high channeled um, high channeled talent. Okay, I just want to shift gears here for a little bit and look at it through the lens of um, the ability pyramid. Okay, there's an ability hierarchy, right, where there's people of lower levels of ability and higher levels of ability, all based on the amount of talent that they have. Okay, and, and the reason I want to look at this is because how much of your fluid and channeled talent that you have is going to... Um, let you know of wh where you're going to be on this pyramid currently and where you can eventually re reach on this pyramid. Now this pyramid has five different levels and at the very base level is the student level. Okay, there's there's the role that, that you play on this pyramid and your contribution to the craft of, of, of whatever it is, whether it's sports or music or, or art. Um, uh, your contribution to that. So on one side it's roles, on the other side it's your your contribution. And at the very bottom you have the student level. The student level, uh, their contribution is 
they know. They are a person who has knowledge. Underneath them, they're not even on, the, on this pyramid. It's someone who doesn't have the knowledge. And the student level is all about acquiring basic knowledge. Above the student level is the amateur level. And their role is to, uh, is that they are motivated by the knowledge that they've gained and they use it for play, basically. Um, your, your amateur level is a person who, who's uh, uh, taking this knowledge and actually trying to do something with it. And these are people who love drawing. We're going to look at it through, through the artist's eyes because I'm an artist. This is a person who loves drawing, who loves um, uh, trying out new tools and practicing. And you know they may get home at work at night and start filling up their sketchbook or they have a sketchbook on the side at their job and whatever. And they're just, they're just playing with art and they're having fun with art. Uh, and that's the amateur level. The level above them is the professional level. And this is pers purposeful use of that knowledge. They're actually using that knowledge for work. That's their contribution. It's not just having knowledge. It's not playing with that knowledge, but it's working with that knowledge. And that's the professional level. Okay, above that is expert. And these are your people who have gained their 10,000 hours and they are finally reached this expert level and what they're doing is they're using their skills creatively to solve problems. These are your people who are, are uh, putting out drawings where you look at it and you're like, oh, that is so creative. I never would have thought of it that way. That is such a cool interpretation of this character or such a cool way to execute on, um, on, on this comic book or, or whatever it may be. You know, it's such a cool illustration that they've done. These are people who are really solving, their contribution is they're solving creative problems creatively, right? Uh, and just doing really killer work and job, at, a killer job at that, okay? On top of them, this is master, okay? And what they're actually doing is, and, and at the master level, it's really only 2% of the population ever reaches this. Um, the master level is inventing new ways of doing things. They're, they're, they're creating, basically creating new things. So you look at someone, you know, who says, well, for the last century, comics have been this way, or the last century, illustration has been this way, and I am now, with my work, saying, no, illustration is now this way, comics are now this way, character design is now, whatever it is, and everybody realizes, oh, this is a new era of of how to do things, uh, and and they start influencing others and and really create movements behind their work by solving not just solving problems but inventing new ways to to deal with these problems. If we're going to step away from art and look at music, this is what the Beatles did. Uh, uh, for years, they were operating on the expert level and just creating really creative music that that you know had a great beat and a, and a great tune but at some point their albums started changing the way that the music industry worked and the way other artists uh, approached their work with the way that they recorded the, the the musical styles and genres that they they delved into and combined um, and so you can definitely look at the recording industry and and rock and roll before the beatles and after the beatles because of their influence and the way that they invented new ways of, of doing things. Uh, so many bands and so many artists are uh, inspired by and, and have given us the music that they have because uh, they were inspired by the Beatles. So that, that's one way to look at it, and that's the master level. All right, so go through this hierarchy again. It's student at the bottom. Student just has knowledge. Amateur plays with that knowledge. A professional works with that knowledge. An expert solves problems with that knowledge, and a master invents with the skills that they've achi achieved. Um, the higher your fluid talent and your channeled talent, the faster you climb this pyramid and the greater your contribution is. Okay, So if you have high levels of fluid and high levels of, of channeled, you're going to reach those upper parts of this pyramid. The lower your levels, and the lower you, you know, the lower your levels of fluid and, and, and channeled talent, the slower your climb is going to be, and the 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 amount of contribution that you have is going to be limited. Okay, so 
you have to ask yourself, uh, according to what you have resources uh, to do and, and what you have access to, what level can you actually attain on this pyramid? Is it just gonna? Are you just gonna reach the upper, you know, edges of amateur, or are you gonna reach the upper levels of professional and dip into expert? Are you gonna be an expert who, who's just performing at the top of your game? That's what you have to figure out. That's what you have to. Um, uh, that's why you really have to take a hard look at, at yourself and what your levels are in order to to understand that. And once you have figured that out that's when you start to have peace and start to have have comfort in knowing that you're you're on that right path okay in the end you can only create the best work that you can create uh as much as i run and train and and try to push myself my body can only physically run as fast as it can run i can't run as fast as uh uh that jamaican runner what's his name usain bolt <laughs> I can only run as fast as Jake Parker can run, okay? So your job is to figure out what the highest level of your fluid and channeled talent will allow you to achieve, and then go get it. Go get that level. Work towards that level. And the work you make along the way and, and the work you're making when you get there, it'll be beautiful because whatever you have is exactly what you need to make your best work, all right? So answering the the for what question you know am i talented enough for what do you do you want to know do you want to play do you want to work do you want to solve do you want to invent and and it's not just do you want to can you can you work at it can you solve things can you invent okay and do you have what it takes to build your canals that can channel whatever amount of fluid talent you have uh, and, and build those canals to get you to that to that level if you do if you find that level that you can attain and if you do have that ability to get yourself there then back to that initial first question are you talented enough the answer is yes hey I hope you enjoyed that video uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts about talent in the comments. Um, I really, I'm really curious to hear your perspective on it as well. And this is something I've been thinking a lot about lately and I just wanted to share it. I wanted to, I just wanted to talk about it. I really think so much of talent is a lot of hard work and just people working hard and hustling and putting in the hours and the time to learn the craft. Um, and so I just, I just want to share that and talk about it. Um, if you get any sort of value out of the videos that I, I post, if you like them, and you haven't bought something from my shop, I just ask that one way to really support me and the work that I do is to go to my online shop and just order a print, order a book, get a order a digital download or something that directly supports my work and what I do. Uh, might I recommend Drawings 3? It's a great book. Um, and I, I, a lot of people tell me that just flipping through it, they get inspired and it gives them ideas to draw. It's the reason I make them. It's the reason I buy other artists' uh, sketchbooks that they put out is I flip through those and I just, it gives me ideas. It gives me uh, uh, inspiration and just creative juices to go out and to, to create more of my own work. I appreciate that and I will see you guys next week. Thanks.